exam four and before exam five and before the final. Okay, so this is it. Uh, okay, so the objectives. Uh, here we're going to take a look at ex ex when I say prime factors, that refers to exposure factors. When and how you apply MA, time, uh, distance, and KVP. Okay? So, so let's just start here. All right, let me, let me, okay, prime factors. Okay, so those prime factors are kilo voltage, okay, kilo voltage peak, KVP, uh, MAS, uh, and distance. Okay, those are your prime factors. A lot of times people forget about this component, but this is a very important component. The distance is just as important as those two, okay? Or at least as important as this one, okay? Uh, so they are, uh, all three of them are important to think about. Uh, once again, because of the standard distances we use, sometimes we forget about distance. But many times you, you have to, you're forced to change. You go do a portable and the patient has a bar on top of the bed, you can't get your distance, so you have to make adjustment for it. So it is important. All right, take control. What do I mean by that? You're responsible for, for your technical factors, okay? The equipment is not, your photo timer is not, <laughs> your hospital is not, you, you are important. The x-ray technology is, is important, okay? Is, is, yeah, it is important. <laughs> and this fact <coughs> is also important. That you are responsible, so you have to take control of, of of it. You have to take ownership of this. So when you hear technologists tell you, oh, don't worry about it, we photo time. Oh, that's because they don't know how to use technical factors. That's why they're doing it, okay? <laughs> that's why, okay? It is the responsibility of an X-ray tech to know technical factors. How can you protect a patient if you don't know technical factors? It's nice to have the AC, yeah? But you have to understand it, okay? You have to understand how it works, why it works, and if it doesn't work properly, you need to be able to know, and you need to be able to use your own technical factors. We're good? So, when I say take control, take responsibility for it, okay? All right, your job is to know how to combine these factors to produce high quality radiographs, okay? That's what you get paid for, <laughs> or you will. Yeah, that's what you will get paid for. <laughs> you get paid now, but you will. Okay, there is hope. <laughs> there is hope you'll get paid. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, quantity and quality. Okay. And, and by the way, this section, you probably seventy percent of what we're going to cover in this section, I already talked about throughout the semester. So it should be. It shouldn't be a too complicated section because I've been throwing this stuff at you from the beginning. And so this is gonna, we're gonna wrap it up, okay? For example, quantity of the beam. You, we already talked about it, intensity of the beam, right? What controls that? MAS, right? Okay, and KVP, right? Okay, and distance. Measuring Rangan, remember, okay? going to be measuring Rengen. Why? Because you're measuring exposure. Right? Yes? All right. Good. And by the way, when we said measuring Rengen, what are the units of Rengen? That's international unit. Kilograms per coulomb. Yeah, coulomb, coulombs per kilogram. Coulombs per kilogram. So it's charge in an amount of weight of what? Weight of what? Air. Okay? So how many uh, ions are you creating in a kilogram of air? That's what, that's what this is saying. Okay? All right. And as you see, if you understand that, you will never forget that this is measuring exposure because at, not at any point when mm -hmm. I define it or when I'm talking about the units, I said absorb those or interaction with the tissue. I said air. Air. That's your key there. Air. If it, in, if it is interacting with air, that means that it's exposure what, you, what you're measuring. If you ever forget, if you understand that, you're not going to have problems. Okay? All right. Okay, quantity and quality. Quality refers to the beam penetrability, right? Yes? We talked about this, right? And it's mainly controlled by what? 
KVP. KVP. How many of these photons will penetrate the anatomy? How many of them will actually go hit the patient and go through the patient? Okay. Numerically, this is represented by something called the half value layer. And I know you guys talked about the half value layer with Martin Partland last semester. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's coming back. It should be coming back. All right. So, and I'll, I'll come back and explain more about the half value layer, which I already talked a little bit before. Okay? Uh, let me say, let's see what else I can say about the half value layer at this point. Uh, the half value layer is nice because when you're measuring penetrability, you cannot measure it just because of KVP. KVP is a factor that influences penetrability, but a way to measure it, okay, you do with the half value layer. Who can define a half value layer? Let's make sure. Andrea? Half value layer. Everybody, how about you, Vianney? I'm not sure if it's correct though. Okay, shoot it. I think it's the half value is the amount of exposure to certain amount of skin, and it's um, decreasing as it. I don't know. Okay, I think you have an idea, but you might be confusing it with yeah. filtration. Yeah. Nobody? Or you, Dennis? It's uh, it's the amount of material that stops the beam at fifty percent, um, or the strength of the beam is not as strong as it used to be. Uh, <laughs> not quite. Not well, quite. So the, the half value layer is the amount of material, yeah. any amount, of, whatever material that is, can be aluminum, can be lead, can be concrete, can be sheetrock. <laughs> any amount of material that is able to reduce the amount of the beam by half. Okay? Any material. It can be rock, can be anything. Anything. Your body. Okay? So is any amount of material that is able to reduce the beam, the amount of the beam by half. Okay, here put a red flag because this is important to understand that you're measuring quant quality, you're measuring it through quantity. Did you realize that? Because this is the amount of material that is used to reduce the amount of the beam by half that is used to measure quality. Okay? So, so if you don't understand right now, make sure you put it there and then you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. When you say the amount of the beam, the amount, the amount of, of photons. photons. Okay. And that's controlled by mass. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Factors affecting X ray emission. So we're going to have uh, milliampers per second, mass, kilovoltage, distance, and now we're adding one more factor here. Okay. Filtration. Okay. The amount of filtration we have there. Okay, qualitative, okay, there is two factors that come into play there, kilovoltage and filtration only. So here, this refers to the quantity, and this refers to penetrability. So when it comes to penetrability, two factors come into play, only two factors, KVP and filtration. What happens mm -hmm. when you add more filtration to, a, to an X-ray machine? Okay, you're gonna have the, the, the quality will go down. Well, well, the amount will go down, but the quality will shift to the right. Remember that? Mm -hmm. We did in the very first section of this class? Mm -hmm. Long time ago? <coughs> it's only two months ago. Oh, in any case. <laughs> That's when you were younger, okay? Mm -hmm. yes. I was just saying, did you say that the half value layer was also a factor of the quality? No, it's the half value layer is used to measure, but it's not a fact. It's a mesh. It's a it's a numerical measurement, okay? That you have to measure uh, quality. Okay, so it's only two factors here. 
and four that affect uh, the quantity. Mary? Okay. All right, if you remember, uh, if you put filter, okay, go back, you can refer to your notes if you want. Let's say you have something like this. This is a, an emission spectrum. You add mm. a filter to it, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a shift Okay, you're going to see a shift in the average energy. Average energy has shifted to the right. Okay, but the amount goes down. Okay, and that's why filtration is in both. Remember that now? Yeah. Coming back. Okay, you better come back quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. MA. All right, milliamp. Okay, determines beam quantity or intensity. Okay, I've said that. So, change the main stations on equipment, uh, change current delivered to the filament. So, for example, when you decide to go, I'm going to use my uh, 100 MA station compared to the 500 MA station, really what you're doing is you're, you're changing an area of your generator where you can move more current. More current. Okay, that's what you're doing. Right? Maybe think of it, I don't know how you want to think of it, think of bigger wires, thicker wires that can move more current, okay? Uh, that will be an analogy to think about. It doesn't, that's not really what happened, but that's, that's how you can think of it. All right, now change to current filament, okay? Change how many electrons are released through thermionic emission, okay? Let me, coming back. Remember, you have in the X-ray circuit, you have a step-up transformer and you have a step-down transformer, right? Mm -hmm. Remember when yeah. Kayla did that whole description, I said, hey, can you do a description of the whole thing? And she did a beautiful job. Remember that? Remember, Kayla? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> she described everything. Huh? Wait, what did I do that? I think that was me. Was that me? Uh -huh. That yeah. might have been me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe it was both of you. Okay. The other pale one. <laughs> See, now she feels compelled to go and look at us. She's going, I did it. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> you all right, Ken? Okay. Don't fall asleep on me. Don't fall asleep on me now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right. It's really triggered by that graph. <laughs> you good? No. No. <laughs> All right, let's hang in there. All right, so change current to filament. All right, so th this is what happens. You're, you're, you have more electrons available. Maybe you want to use less time if you want to end up with the same mass as a total. Uh, but more electrons are available to you. Okay, that's what happens when you change when you go to a higher MA station, okay? All right, current, all right? Remember, unit of current is the um, ampere, okay? One amp or one ampere is equals to one coulomb, which is a measurement of charge, right? Yeah, <clears throat> okay, one coulomb, okay, of electric charge flowing in one second within a conductor. So, one amp, okay, okay, one amp. Now, remember that we typically RMA stations are in milliamps, right? But one amp, in one amp of current, where well you have uh, one coulomb, okay, off electric charge flowing in one second, right? So, so what we have is one amp equals to one coulomb per second. Now, you can also have, this can be turned into electrons, okay? So in one amp, you will have 6.3 times 10 to the 18. You need to memorize this number. Before you ask me, yes, you do. Memorize these numbers, all of them. Okay, Th those are important, okay? I mean, if you memorize that one, you can memorize that one. So how much, how many electrons do we have in one milliamp, which is more familiar to what we do, right? <clears throat> because we use 500 milliamps, 300 milliamps, 100 milliamps. So in one milliamp, you have 6.3 times 10 to the 15 electrons. It's still, it's a huge quantity of electrons. But it's, they are measured in seconds. We typically measure in what? Milliseconds. Milliseconds. So it's just a matter of doing the conversion, okay? 
but you, you will have questions like this on your national boards. They'll ask you how many electrons are flowing if you're using the 500 milliamp station, the 500 MA station, and you're gonna let it flow for 50 milliseconds. Okay, so you need to be able to do that conversion. Okay, are we, are we good with that? Everybody, those numbers? They make sense? Okay, so to current, okay, there is a direct relationship to beam intensity, okay? which you can add if you want to. There is also a direct relationship to patient dose. Right? Okay, so, so change, so what this is saying, if you change from a 200 MA station to a 300 MA station, what you're doing is you're increasing the number of electrons by 50%. Okay, if you go to 400, then it will be 100%. Or if you go to, I'm sorry, 400, it will be 100%. So a 50% increase in the number of photons. So if you increase the number of electrons, 50%, 50% of the number of photons will go up, and the patient dose will also go up by 50%. It's a one-to-one it's -one relationship there. Okay, and that's, Take a look here. That's if no change is made to exposure time. Okay, if the time <coughs> remains the same, then, then you do. If you're doubling the mass, double the number of electrons, double the number of photons, double the patient dose. Very easy. Okay? All right. Exposure time, control duration of the exposure. So here you're controlling for how long are you going to allow the electrons that you have in the electron cloud or how long are you going to allow them to flow from cathode to the anode? Okay? All right, so directly proportional to intensity of the beam. Yes, we said that. Short exposure times are useful in reduction of motion artifacts. So, for example, if you're doing a, a child, a baby, it's good, it's recommended to use a high MA station and use a very short time. Then. Uh, then you have less chance that the baby's going or the radiograph is going to have any motion, right? So far, so good. Okay. Older equipment express time in fractions, and I don't know how many of you have seen that. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> you you don't see it, but who knows where you will end up working, guys? There are clinics, and I've seen them. There are clinics where you will find equipment just like. See that panel I have in the back, all the way in the far back, that gray one. Okay, and I kept it there from the time I was a student. <laughs> we had that. I kept it there so you guys can see it because there, there are clinics, there are places where you have equipment like that, okay? So newer equipment typically express time in milliseconds, so fractions, okay? Recall that exposure time is always measuring seconds. So when you say mass, okay, that's milliamp per second. All right, so MA times seconds will give you mass. Okay. And again, this is what controls the quantity of photons. And if you were to use film, this is what is controlling film density. Okay, if with radiographic film, okay, if you double the uh, mass, you double the density. Also, there is a direct <coughs> relationship there. Now, can we say the same thing with computerized systems? No, you cannot. Okay, what we can say, and I want you to add another bullet here, bullet there. What you're gonna have with computerized systems, you're gonna have double the exposure of the plate. Okay. All right. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Yeah. If you're using, you, you can put it here if you want. <coughs> with radiographic film density will go up, right? But with computerized systems, what you measure is the exposure to the plate. <coughs> Why do I say that? Because with computerized system, is your computer that is great. Remember when we looked at the. Uh, the histogram and the algorithms that are used, that's what really give 
the density to an image. It's not really the exposure anymore, or it's not really the, uh, the quantity anymore. Okay? So with computerized systems, exposure. Okay? And then this will also uh, increase patient dose. <clears throat> All right, mass reciprocity. Okay. This is something new. This you haven't seen yet. So here what we're saying is the same radiographic film density or exposure. Add exposure here, please. Density if, you got, if you're using film. Exposure if you're using computerized systems. The same radiographic exposure will result from different MA and time selections provided the mass totals are equal. Okay, what this is saying it doesn't matter what combination of time and MA you're using. If the end result is the same mass, you shall have the same exposure. Okay? There is going to be some variability, and I'll talk about it later on. But for now, just remember that. They should be almost there. Okay. So, in this case, I was trying to give you an example uh, of how. And look more than looking at the knee, look at here they should be pretty similar, regardless of the combination you have. I know they don't look the same, because that was film. Okay, and there were other factors that came into play. All right, KVT. <coughs> Things coming back, guys? Okay, this is a review. The only new thing you have seen here was reciprocity, and nothing else. All right, kilo voltage. Controls beam quality, right? What's another term that I've been using for quality? KVP. Huh? No, not KVP. <coughs> Penetrability. Penetrability. Penetrability for, uh, for quality, okay? So energy and penetrability, that's what it refers to. Okay. Uh, and it will influence, take a look, and we better get this right. <laughs> influence a scatter, right Amanda? Right. How? If you increase KVP, what happens to scatter? When you increase KVP, the amount of scatter decreases, but the amount of scatter that reaches the image receptor increases. Perfectly done. Stronger. All right. Okay. Maybe a month from now, we'll, I'll be saying, Kayla, Kayla said remember it. when you said that? <laughs> Kayla said that. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Dramatic effect on radiographic contrast. All right, now, this is still true, okay? Doesn't matter if it is film or if it is a computerized system. There will, it will influence contrast, okay? Why? Why is that, Mary? Um, it has to do with the penetrability and which densities patient picks and how KVP, like, my brain is not. <laughs> you're you're doing it right. <laughs> Daniel? Uh, it's, is it because if, you, if you're increasing the KVP, you're going to push through, say, the softer tissues, and you're going to see a greater difference between uh, an, 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 an anatomy, like a sharpness between of the bones? Or like more deep. When you increase it? When you increase it. Huh. Not really. Not really. Not really. What's going to happen when you increase KVP, because of what Amanda said, you're going to have more scatter reaching the image receptor, you're going to have more fog, okay? All right, you're going to have more fog, and that will increase the scale of contrast, okay? So you're going to have more shades of gray, okay? Which, in other terms, is low contrast. Why do they call it, why is it they use scale? I don't know, guys. I mean, that's uh, what they use, so I'm just repeating Okay, but that's how they use it, uh, which is another term to say if you increase KVP that you have low contrast. Okay, why? Because you have an excess of scatter radiation. And the same thing will happen if you have a bigger patient or if you don't collimate, remember? Okay, good. All right, a few more things. So, uh, KVP will influence beam quantity, increase target interaction would increase KVP, remember that? Because the electrons flowing from the cathode to the anode, they have more energy. Now they can bounce 
from atom to atom. Remember, on the average, how many interactions you have? A thousand. About a thousand. And now, if you increase that energy, if you increase the kinetic energy, now they can boom, 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 boom bounce more atoms. So you're going to have more than a thousand. And so, the more interactions you have, the more photons you create. Okay. All right. X-ray quantity or X quantity is approximately directly proportional to the square of the ratio of the change in kVp. So this is not directly proportional, but is the square of the ratio of the change in kVp. Okay. Let's take a break, guys. Let's, let's stretch. Yeah.